So if you've had the privilege of hearing their death growls in concert, you might be surprised to learn that the members of Metallica are actually level-headed family men offstage. They've dominated the heavy metal scene for over three decades. One of their keys to longevity, they say, is finding work-life balance. Downright zen heavy metal. Here's ABC's Nick Watt. They even shared a mic after a tech mishap. Gaga and Metallica rocking the Grammys. How did this happen? You know, Gaga has been a um, sort of self-professed metalhead, a lifelong Metallica fan. We were at dinner six weeks ago, four weeks ago, and I said, we're doing the Grammys. Would you like to join? And she said, yes. It took uh, about 12 seconds. We were granted exclusive access to a pre-show practice in L.A. Friday night. You guys and Gaga didn't immediately strike me as a natural marriage. By the time she spent, what, like 30, 30 45 minutes with us, she totally got into the song, worked out a vocal arrangement with James, got the feel of the song. It was pretty seamless. OK, Gaga, I'm very familiar with. We all are. Poker Face, among others, a worldwide number one. She just played the Super Bowl halftime show. But these guys, yeah, I've heard nothing else matters. And nothing else matters. I'm going to come clean. I'm more of like a Fleetwood Mac kind of guy. I finally understood what your kind of music is about because you kind of feel it. And without a doubt, it was kind of eye opening for me. You kind of you kind of enjoyed it. right? I did enjoy it. Well, see, that's the thing. I mean, our message comes by or comes through most accurately, most precisely when you see us in a live situation. We all know who Metallica are. I mean, you can buy a T-shirt in H&M. Enter Sandman. Excellent. Possibly the biggest Metallica number, but now I need to know more. Never, never I started this band when I was 17. James and I have been together for 35 years. It's the longest relationship I've had with anybody, basically, other than my father. James Hetfield, lead vocals and guitar. Now, 100 million plus album sales later, after massive tours on every continent, eight Grammys, they're still here. Bigger than ever. Today, they announced a North American stadium tour. Now, we sit here in our early 50s and go, wow, <laughs> this is really cool. They keep coming. In just a few months, they've sold nearly a million copies of their latest album, Hardwired to Self-Destruct, and over 36 years have, well, not self-destructed. You guys are still playing the Grammys. You guys are still selling out stadiums. You're still number one. It's very honest what we do. We strap on our instruments, you know, the four of us, and what you see is what you get. This all might never have happened. Lars Ulrich came to the US in 1979 from his native Denmark to become a tennis player. Sort of the black sheep of, of the tennis side of the family because my father was a professional tennis player. Music had always been my passion, had been my hobby, had been kind of waiting in the wings to take over, and it did. James Hatfield answered a want ad for other metal musicians to jam with. When James and I started, I was the mom. <laughs> I was the one that took I was my mom. I've never <laughs> said that before. I, uh, wow. It was an exclusive on Nightline. Because you never want to play stiff, you know? I mean, it, sometimes okay. we look stiff because we'll be all like... Uh-huh. I love the facial expressions there. Nice. <laughs> so you look like you're pissed off and you look stiff, but actually you're just bringing more impact to the strings. That's the way I look at it. Bassist Rob Trujillo has become famous for his crab pose on stage. I'm a 43-year-old man in tight jeans. I'm not sure this is going to happen. Well, you always got to make sure that your pants are pull your, pull your pants up. Pull your up. pants up. And then you kind of, you know, you kind of have to, <laughs> you know, you know, got I can't. <sighs> for all Rick, it's really about more than just the music. I love playing drums, but 
I love playing drums in a collective. Drumming is the gateway to the adventure. I'm not one of these guys that sits around and plays drums for like eight hours and always has to tap on something. Yeah, yeah. The 2004 Fly on the Wall documentary, Some Kind of Monster, showed a band with some issues. I was straight up with you and I told you, I'm an dude, and what have you been doing? It's a bunch of guys who have never really had an in-depth conversation about how they're feeling and what's going on and what they think of everything around for 20, 25 years. And all of a sudden it happens and then all hell breaks loose. These days, they slow down to smell the coffee. We don't tour for more than two weeks. We have a very strict two-week rule in our band. We take care of our kids, take care of our families, our wives, and all our domestic responsibilities. And then we get a chance to run away with a rock and roll band. Coming to a stadium near you again this summer. It's pretty crazy that people still, 35, 36 years into a career, come, still care, still are passionate, and that there's still a, a turnover for newer, younger fans. Why do you think people still care and support you? It's hard to answer that without, I, I sometimes get a little uncomfortable, sort of hand on heart, we're somewhat good at what we do, our little particular niche. Niche doesn't really describe duetting with Gaga at the Grammys, but hey, I'm Nick Watt for Nightline in Los Angeles.